Welcome to InterVR, the podcast where we talk about all things virtual reality. I'm your host, Chris Miranda, and on today's show, I have someone very special. Uh, the VR guinea pig, Flake, is on the show. Thanks for so, thanks so much for coming on the show uh, today, Flake. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. I'm excited because I just saw, uh, I got to see your video on uh, your highlight reel, and uh you know, one of the things that stood out for me was the sense of humor that uh, that really speaks to me, uh, to be honest. Uh, I, I really enjoy your sense of humor. So keep it up there, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> so I, okay, I, I, I find that uh, with, with so many of the Let's Play videos, uh, just and I know it's been commented on, on Reddit, but the humor is so forced. And uh, for me, I just like to play, um, and uh, a lot of people know uh, uh, my good buddy Kane that uh, that I work on a lot of uh, uh, you know all things all things Rift related, and um, and yeah, we just goof around and have fun, and, nice. and that's what it's all about, and that's kind of why uh, I'm interested in in VR and it's just all about fun. Yeah, it's no, it's truly you know you can really tell when someone is uh, not having fun or or in, in the let's play video or in whatever. I mean, it's just yeah, you can really tell when someone's not having fun, and I can tell you know it, it just looks more genuine when someone is actually having fun with the thing that they're doing. Um, so no, definitely that's that's really cool. I mean, I you know let's get let's get uh, the origin story out of the way because I really want to know how you came about to become the VR guinea pig. And how this whole, you know, I, I'm, I'm really curious about your story. How did you come well, up? Well, I think you know? you're going to have to blame uh, blame Kane for all of this. He um, he, he, he got on with uh, with with DK1, and uh, and we work in the same office together. So he got DK1, and, you know, within moments, we, uh, we were buying, uh, like, a better gaming laptop to run it. And, uh, you know, and, and then he started... Uh, doing some developing and I'm sure you've seen um, tales from the rift and, and some of his stuff. And, and a lot of that stuff is also on, on uh, our channel, but um, yeah, he was doing some developing and, and he wanted me to keep trying out all his, uh, all his kind of iterations and, and demos. And I kind of became his Guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the honest truth. And that, that's where it all came from. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And so before before your friend Kane, by the way, shout out to Kane. You're doing wonderful work, my friend. Uh, what do you? What were you doing before before Kane and before the Oculus Rift? What's uh? What, what was your life before? Um, you know, always been a uh, you know been a gamer, but more of a console guy. So the, this whole PC realm, and, and I even was a Mac guy, uh, which which Rev uh, made fun of. But I, I only recently, I mean, all of this is new to me. And so since since all of this uh, awesome riffness, I, I just picked up a PC and I'm giving my Mac to my mother and uh, kind of in a whole new world. Haven't turned on my PS4 since. Wow. I can relate to you because I come into the world of virtual reality from the console gaming place and there you go yeah no it's it's a weird thing you know i i went from the console race skipped the v the pc master race and now i am a part of the vr master um uh, i don't know if it's uh, the the chosen one <laughs> the chosen people uh, the, the, ma the master race of the master race yes <laughs> so it's you know it's extremely exciting this whole new realm <laughs> Oh, absolutely, and it's been so interesting to see this development from uh, really this this sort of being you know a myth or something we all remember from from childhood um, in some like you know wacky '90s renditions to actually see a product come to fruition and then an explosion. I mean, this has been a, a crazy year. What year? Year and a half. Mm -hmm. I mean, from from a crowdfunding project to multi-billion dollar uh, purchases. I mean, just what an amazing story and just an amazing thing to be uh, a part of. No, yeah, it truly is. It's an, it's incredible. And, I, you know, I think that you and I are, are uh, witnessing history <laughs> either from within, you know, where it's being made or from at least very close to where it's being made. Uh, you know, just... You know, being so close to the developers that are putting, you know, all these amazing experiences out there, it's uh, it's truly, it, I don't know, it's kind of, I, I think sometimes it's hard for me to believe what's happening around me. Like, is this is this shit high science fiction? Like, what the, what's happening here? Like, absolutely. I, you know, what is your, what is your, 
your take on virtual reality i mean what is your you know do you have like a a, a vision or a hope of what it, this technology can can become you know it, it's to be honest it's so new to me that i'm still thinking of a world of, of gaming and how awesome this is from a gaming perspective mm -hmm. and it's only sort of new to me even thinking of this as you know the, the potential of a metaverse i mean i didn't even know what it was months ago yeah so even conceptually and so I, you know my focus is still so hardcore on gaming but i finally appreciating with with experiences like riff max where you can get together with your friends you can watch a movie you could put on a talk show, karaoke night, do all these different things. And, and you know, I can say that I've made good friends and met people from around the world because of VR. Yeah. And that doesn't mean plugging in and shutting out the rest of your world. I think it's just ex expanding, um, you know, you know, sort of where you are, your, your, your place. And for me, I never thought about the social aspect, but Riff Max has shown me, you know, leaps and bounds of, of what the potential is. Truly, yeah. It's uh, I I was able to uh, sneak into Rift Max Theater once, uh, but my unfortunately my my Oculus my Rift was was acting up, and it took me a month to get it back to work, and and now I'm waiting for the next Rift Max Theater thing to show up so I can uh, you know crash the party. But I yeah no, it's truly uh, you're right, a hundred percent in terms of what is the thing that will you know propel VR to the mainstream. I think a huge factor will be that social multiplayer aspect. Uh, just, yeah. yeah. Well, and, 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 that, and not to, you know, everybody wants to talk about, <laughs> talk about Facebook, but you know, as bizarre, a lot of people saw it as a bizarre move, but you think about the social aspects and it starts making a lot more sense. Yeah. I mean, for me, all it took was read the, the book ready player one. And for me, it, it, I was like, Oh, <clears throat> this makes sense in the R universe and our reality somehow this makes sense how this yeah we can go on about the facebook thing for a while but it's it's yeah but it's science fiction somehow <laughs> yeah no you're, you're you're absolutely right so it, it'll be you know i can't wait to see what uh, what this all means and yeah. and really you know from my perspective and, and kane's perspective you know i think it's all about the developers and it's all about supporting yeah. the developers because w w without without you know, supporting developers, you don't have great content without, you don't, I mean, the truth is, is that all this success that Oculus has, ha, is having and has had would not exist without the developers. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And a really loud ass community. I mean, that community kind of helped. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's true. No, these, these developers are, are really sticking their necks out for their passion. And I think that's what it takes really. Like if, if it, a technology uh so world changing in my view you know if you're gonna go to work on it you have to work from the heart like it's gotta be your passion um i, I yeah and, go ahead but you wouldn't you wouldn't i don't think you would have a subreddit of of people that are super passionate mm -hmm. if you didn't have you know you know anything beyond the tuscany demo i mean you need other content you need the riff coaster you need all these different demos and how this thing is spiraled to yeah. create this this you know this belief and this uh you know the, the the hype and the belief and the love for for this stuff yeah. and uh you know and for me that's why you know doing youtube videos for me is really all about having fun and supporting the developers because i feel like the more that we support the developers the, the more awesome uh, experiences we're going to have and, and, and we're seeing it. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with the, with, with your, with, with your idea of, of supporting developers. I think that people that develop games and experiences for virtual reality and, and are at the forefront of this technology should be admired a hundred percent. I agree. I think, you know, especially in our today, in today's culture, it's so easy to, it's so easy to like a, a celebrity, you know, for what? What do you do? Celebrity or, or a rapper or a singer? Like, what do you do? You just sing. You just yeah. pretend to be someone else. But what, what are you doing to make an impact on the world? And a lot of these developers, some of the things are, are they, they're working on, whether it's medicine, whether it's gaming, entertainment. I mean, you know, I think they will, you know, change the world. <laughs> so it's crazy. I mean, yeah. And I like where our priorities are, are lying in terms of who we praise and give attention to. Well, abs absolutely, and, and I think, and I think, you know, I think we've seen a community that that I, 
I really truly believe that it's a solid, very, very cool community that really does care and has priorities in the right place. And I think that's, I mean, really why you saw the uproar over Facebook, just because of the passion, regardless of what you think, there's just so much, so much passion behind the subject matter. And it's yeah. really cool to be a part of something that, you know, not only that we're passionate about, but others are passionate about. Let me ask you this in terms of, um, I didn't. I didn't plan to get this controversial this early in the show, but fuck it. Here we go. In terms of, uh, you know, something that that I that I that I that I perhaps you can help me figure out is the idea that the moment Facebook bought Oculus, I remember seeing a lot of developers get up and throw their arms up in the air and you know wave them yeah. like they just don't care. I'm just kidding. They, they were really upset. I, I remember yeah. there were developers who were really upset. And what I'm what I'm so that simmered down, obviously, and you know the prevalent voices these days are, yeah, you know, what are we gonna do about it? But at least it's Oculus, and you know we trust Oculus. You know, I mean, but but here's the thing. Here's where I got. We're trying to get to. Sorry. Are, do you think that because now there's this all all this money into Oculus, right? Now I'm seeing the the. Uh, or perhaps all this money is going in Oculus now. If I were a developer, that I used to be, you know, uh, here's the thing: do I, do I yell out and scream wolf and say, hey, this is a bad idea, hey, you know, or should I just get in line and wait for my turn? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like there are developers out there who are holding back their their hesitation towards the Facebook deal. But because they don't want to burn down that bridge with Oculus, they're, you know, again, again, it's because, you know, money speaks a lot. Um, well, yeah. yeah well, you're, you know, I think a lot of developers, I think the fear of this acquisition is that, you know, here am I, you know, uh, you know, a one man, two man, th whatever, th three man team in somebody's basement mm -hmm. putting out some really compelling stuff. But I know that if I had a team of a hundred guys just as good as us with, you know, a multi-million dollar budget, they could destroy us in a week, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and my idea isn't, you know, unique enough where, where I, where I own that idea. So, you know, what's to stop, you know, sort of the, the, the big giant from coming in, taking the idea and making it better and kicking your ass. And, and so that I think is the fear But like you said, on the flip side, guys have spent, you know, a lot of time on their project. And the last thing they want is to, like you said, burn that bridge. So you're hopeful that maybe Oculus will, will answer your emails when it comes to, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, of collaboration or mm -hmm. some sort of, 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 of team effort on, on your project. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as far as I, I know and what I've heard, you know, Oculus has been really silent and really hasn't been... Uh, working with the developers like they ought to, and yeah. and, and hopefully that'll change. And, and you you've read that you know Palmer has has at least made that comment. Yeah. Um, it just you know it, it, it's too early to know, and 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 we all are kind of waiting to see how it works out. So it makes sense to to not rock the boat, and it makes sense to say, well, you know, we're hopeful, and and we hope that that we can do something because you know. You, you're passionate. You love what you do. You you want to be a developer, but there is fear of a multi-million dollar giant coming and just squashing you and and, and making a better uh, product and a better experience than you, than you ever could. Yeah, no. It's... Or or or, or, may, or maybe you're sending in your resume and you're hoping that you know Oculus will. Because I don't know if you'd noticed, but I mean Oculus seems to keep just picking guys up. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, you know, you have guys, you know, like the guy who did, uh, uh, uh Rift Coast with Boone and you have a lot of these guys who've gotten yeah. picked up over time and, you know, maybe a dev is sitting by saying, I don't want to rock the boat. I, I have a real, I want to show what I can do, but maybe they'll, they'll answer my call on my resume, or maybe they'll answer my call to partner up, you know, for, for, for my product to be included with CV1. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Um, but What else do you do? You, 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 if you love what you do, you keep on and, uh, you know, hope for the best. Yeah, no, that definitely left people. Uh, I mean, I could imagine a, a, a developer or two must have felt themselves in an awkward situation where like, yeah, I don't like what just happened, but I'm going to I'm going to have to suck it and, you know, grind and, and, you know, put something out there regardless. It, yeah, it's just an interesting 
thing that that well, developed. Yeah, and a guy, but a, a guy like Notch, mm-hmm. he can throw up his middle fingers and say "fuck everybody" and 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 you know Facebook's dirty um, because he's worth hundreds of millions. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a dev with a hundred million bucks in your back pocket, yeah, the, you know, burn bridges all day because who cares? But for everybody else, it's wise to you know hope. And, and believe that that despite this acquisition, that there is still a little bit of control that, that Palmer insists that there is, um, and uh, and hope that they're going to do right by devs, and they're still going to keep this, uh, you know, somewhat of a grassroots um, story. Mm-hmm. Um, but the truth is, is that you know they don't owe us anything. Yeah, it's true. And that's the and that's what and I think that's ultimately what hurts. Everybody, and that's what, what what sort of that that uproar was about is that you know we all wish that we were we that we back this you know actually at an investment level, uh, and we all wish that we were taking this ride with them, and emotionally we feel that we have, and so um, you know everybody wants to feel part of uh, of this experience, you know the the financial aspect aside, and uh, so you know it's 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 scary and it's uncertain, and we love the great story, but the truth is, is it's a product and. We knew what we were getting when we when we backed it on Kickstarter, mm-hmm. and uh, and what a great story to be a part of. It's truly an amazing story to be a part of. I think that you know, and now uh, if you thought that was controversial, controversial, let's let let me ask you about this. In terms of you know, like for you for yourself, uh, do you feel like you censor yourself, or do you feel like you hold back from judging? Uh, you know, or will you ever? I mean. Again, I don't. We can't predict the future. For all I know, Facebook is going to put out a fabulous product that is going to be fucking amazing, and there's not going to be any trouble, and no one's going to say a thing. But let's say they don't. I mean, let's say they. I mean, and because they're a big company, uh, my tongue just got tied. That was silly, you know. But because they're a big company, I think they're not immune. They're not infallible. They're going to make mistakes. And so, for you and and even for me, I struggle with this question, like. As someone who is an enthusiast and is out, uh, you know, out there, you know, putting myself out there, do I, do I, is my allegiance to what I think is the truth or my allegiance to, you know, this, this amazing story, this amazing product, this amazing company, Uh, you know, for you, I mean, you know, what do you think, Uh, hard to predict the future again, but what do you think, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean... (laughs) You know, for me, I'm not in a position where, you know, it, you know, my 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 love and my passion and my involvement in the VR community has just to do with nothing else but just the love for it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I you know, this isn't a, a career, this isn't a paycheck, this isn't you know anything like that for me. It's really just all about the the, the love. So you know, for me, yeah, I, I I feel comfortable saying anything and being completely blunt and honest. Whereas those that depend on this, um, you know, listen, when your paycheck is, 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 is on the line, you're going to shut your mouth. But most sense. folks. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm not in that position. So, um, you know, I think it really comes down to what do I have to lose? And, and I don't have much to lose. So, um, you know, if, if we saw a terrible product, I, I would absolutely say this is a terrible product. If I need a Facebook account and I need to log in and, you know, these are all the things that, that Palmer has said, no, this will never happen. Yeah. Um, but if it did, I would absolutely shout from the rooftops uh, that, that this is crap. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, again, I, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for now, I mean, uh, who knows? You might be next to PewDiePie in two years or, or less. <laughs> who knows? Um, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't count on that. Like I said, I'm just having a good time and it's fun playing these demos. And to me, the coolest thing is I've gotten emails uh, here and there from from devs that say, here's my demo. And, uh, you know, like like Shove, here's my demo. Check it out. And, and for me to get to experience something like that, like kind of like feel VIP for a second, mm. I mean, that, that's everything. I mean, you know, the, the, the fact that somebody, you know, gives, gives a shit and says, here, I liked your video, will you check out my game? I mean, to me, that is the coolest thing that makes me super stoked, and, and that's all I care about. So, I mean, the, the millions of dollars that PewDiePie's bringing in, I mean, you know, that'd be cool, but, uh, but I'm just stoked that, uh, that somebody, you know, watches my video and says cool game or nice video i mean i for me it's just i'm i'm, I'm i guess i'm pretty simple 
No, that's a beautiful attitude to have, I think. And and I, and I think that also that symbiotic relationship that you form between the developer and yourself, you know, uh, you know, going uh, by him letting you try out his demo then he gets more his game more gets more more exposure and you get more that's a yeah it's a beautiful and symbiotic relationship well, right yeah. There. yeah well yeah and, and it's and, it, and it's cool and you know i mean it, it's not um you know from the beginning you know sort of king and i are our sort of you know perspective on this whole thing and this sort of you know, development perspective. Um, I mean, really, we've always said, and, and not to sort of, you know, give us a pat on our back, but just state a fact, the majority of folks that do Let's Play videos or reviews or anything, never, the majority of people never credit the developer. You never see links to the project. Mm. You don't even see, uh, you know, any uh, shout out. It's, it's basically, I mean, you don't see PewDiePie doing that. You don't see a lot of these guys doing it. And so, um, you know, for us, I think that devs recognize that, you know that's where our focus is, and and uh, it's just it's just cool. It's it's a really cool thing to be uh, to be you know sort of appreciated in that respect. And uh, yeah, it's it was it's the most flattering thing. It was just super super cool. It is. It's yeah yeah. I, I truly agree. Tell me more about the let's play phenomena because I'm always I'm, I'm I'm fascinated by it. Sometimes I get I, I sorry. Right? It's yeah. It's 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 like a weird social experiment unraveling before my eyes, and it's like. You, I, I, I sometimes I get tempted to put out a let's play video, but I'm like, oh, I don't know. You know, every there's everybody and their mama's cousin is putting out a let's play video. I mean, can you yeah. try to rationalize why let's play videos are? I, I mean, I have fun, but you know, to someone outside this community or someone who's never seen a let's play video, like, what well, can you? Well, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried. You try to tell people, and usually where you go is is with the uh, the qualifier. Do you realize that the top, you know, handful of YouTube channels in existence are all game related? I mean, when you tell people the millions of upon millions of subscriptions, a guy like PewDiePie or Smosh or the, whatever, all I mean, there's so many guys with mul just millions of people, mm -hmm. millions. I mean, to me, you know, a few hundred watching watching the amount of minutes that that, that your video has been watched you know, sort of get larger than the minutes that you'll even be alive. I mean, to me, that's just crazy. So, I mean, they're on such an exponential level. Um, it, it's bizarre, but I think when you explain it to people, um, you know, with the, well, you know, with this qualifier that, that there's so many, this is not just a small community. I mean, there's just millions upon millions upon millions of people watching this stuff. Yeah. And then for myself, I mean, I'm somebody that whatever I'm into or checking out, I always look for a video or a review on whether it's, you know, tech or, you know, sports equipment or cars or, you know, so I, for me, it's what I do. And so I, I get it that if you want to, you know, you want to check out the latest experience in whatever game, it makes sense to, you know, check it out and see if it's worth buying yourself. I mean, it's almost, you know, this world that we've created of sort of consumer reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least that's my perspective. I mean, some is just straight up just gameplay and sort of entertaining comedy. And I, and I think that that, you know, there's people who are out for that, too. There's definitely value. I mean, I, I definitely see the, the entertainment value in them. Uh, it's just it's a, an interesting phenomena. And yeah, I, I wonder what the future of it looks like. Do you think Let's Play videos could be imitated, replicated somehow in virtual reality? How do you mean? Like, I, like I, I, I perhaps, perhaps, let's say, let, I let, let's say I want to see you play Dread Halls, uh, and what I would do is there would be these third-person camera angles that I would plug in my Oculus Rift with, and I would be able to see your character, your avatar being being chased around by monsters as you commentate. I, I don't know. I mean, I wonder if. Well, it's it's interesting because um, because like Time Rifters has that idea where you experience gameplay along with basically an avatar that's already run through and played the game. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've checked out Time Rifters, but yeah, that's a really cool way that you can actually, I mean, a little bit different than just a Let's Play, but it's actually legitimate, like, real play. Yeah. In the sense where, you know, you would have a situation where, you know, if you're into PewDiePie and he plays a game and, you know, then you can play, you know, a co-op mode along with him or, you know, I mean, that, that's a, that's a cool idea. I mean, I think, I think all these things are going to 
progress. I mean, I, I think I haven't heard of anyone else doing it, but time rifters, mm-hmm. but I think it, it was a really cool idea and you could actually, you know, play with your favorite, you know, gamers. I mean, why not? It's a super novel concept. And I, you know, and I've interviewed the guys from time, time rifters. Uh, you know, uh, are you in Canada? Yeah, no, there were in the same hometown town actually. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Just tell them I say hi. Yeah, actually, and there's, and there's, it's funny cause, um, we did we did a um, like kind of like a, a like a meetup in in a, in a local pub, mm-hmm. and they were there, and um, and it was we, we hadn't met them before, and it was really just cool to actually I didn't even realize that they were here in Calgary, so to meet uh, another group of uh, you know I mean beyond enthusiasts I mean they're really good developers yeah um, and uh, so it was cool to see that that. There's actually, I mean, not a huge community, but there are some, you know, VR enthusiasts here and actually like a professional uh, developing team. So it was very cool to, to get that experience. And they honestly couldn't have been two cooler people. Yeah, they're awesome. They, they really are. Just they- su- super chill. And they gave every, everybody a really good experience. And the game is really fun. I mean, it was just, I, I, I hope, I mean, and, and you've seen it on Reddit. This is this sort of new experience where people are um, doing these you know, meetups all over. Mm-hmm. I think it's so cool. I mean, what a what a nice way to to, to meet people. I you know, I, I wonder if one day someone will come up with a way to visualize this. Uh, perhaps a map. I don't know if you've seen this YouTube video where they show uh, every. I think Really? Like every nuclear bomb? They show every nuclear bomb ever exploded since 1945? I wonder if there could be like a, a map in the world where it could show every Oculus Rift meetup since 2012. I feel like I've seen it, unless it's just a dream, but I feel like I've seen it and it's an app or some sort of experience and it shows you um, almost just, just a topographical map with all the different meetups. Nice. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where I saw that, or maybe I'm just making that up. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's. I think it's really cool. It's really cool. I mean, you know, I think gamers get, um, you know, pigeonholed in this this idea that, um, you know, it's an antisocial experience, and it's really not. I mean, majority mm-hmm. of people are gaming online with friends, and I mean, the v, VR experience. Uh, I just think, like I said before, it just shows how, you know what a social experience it, it can be. Yeah, I no, it's truly uh, you know, going back to the whole uh, let's play thing. Like, I wonder, uh, and, and you know, to tie it into the whole gaming, I wonder if you know how the Oculus Rift will be the ultimate gaming device of our generation. I mean, I ar- I say that arguably, or probably not, but. You know, regardless, this is going to be an amazing device for gaming, and I wonder if people are going to use it to watch people play games. You know, just like Let's Play. I wonder if that will be a thing. Well, I think I, I, I do. I mean, I think the same way is that you'll go into, you know, the Rift Max Theater and, and watch uh, your favorite movie mm-hmm. um, or have whatever experience that, that you want to, to, to have in there. Um, I think the same is true. I mean, I think that you know, media is a big part of it. And I think watching movies, watching videos, uh, and like you said, watching Let's Play, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. Um, I, I really do. I, I, I think that, you know, the, the idea of, to me, I mean, and, and, and I think generations are different and, and people's focus, but um, the idea of, you know, not having to go out in minus uh, 30 weather to see a movie, but rather sitting on my couch, hanging out with friends from all over the world, watching a movie together. I think that is the coolest thing. It is super cool. What is, where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, I know it's a crazy question to ask, but I, I just wonder if you have you know, your goals. Where, where, where are you trying to go? Ah, uh, man, just, try, just trying to survive, man. Um, uh, wh- that's a good question. I, you know what? I don't know. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, when it comes to VR, I mean, I, I, I hope that, um, you know, that I'm, you know, whether I have a place in it, you know, with, with VR guinea pig or, or any of it, I mean, that, I guess I, I, I don't really think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but from just a, a, a consumer sort of VR perspective, I just, I hope that I'm in a really cool place where I can get inside some of my favorite first person shooters, um, you know, and, and really have that experience. I mean, um, I can't, you know, his name escapes me right now, but I, there was that guy on Reddit recently, um, younger kid, high school student 
that, that uh, took that airsoft gun and, 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 um, and modded it with all kinds of, uh, of, of tracking. And, um, you know, for me, I'm such, I love, uh, first person shooters. I mean, that really is my, my, my gaming love. And, uh, the idea of having, being able to hold uh, a gun in my hand and have the rift on, maybe even the Omni, uh, and, and being able to, um, you know, to really have that immersive experience. I mean, to me, that's what, that, that to me is what, you know, that's my end goal. That's what I want out of out of, uh, of VR. But everybody's different. I mean, yeah. for me, I, like I said before, you know, my focus really is from the gaming perspective. But um, you know, put me inside uh, Call of Duty or or uh, you know Battlefield. I mean, you're gonna make me really happy. Yeah, I cannot wait to experience a Battlefield game inside of virtual reality properly. You know, like a proper implemented. You know, I know it's a pipe dream, but to think that they could develop something from the ground up. For VR, like a Battlefield game, or you know, or just wanna, yeah, something like that, like just something expansive and huge, where you'll be like, you'll be one person amongst two hundred, uh, you know, about to storm uh, some 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 base, and then just surrounded by that madness. I wonder if people are gonna get PTSD from that sort of experience, though. <laughs> All the crazy. <laughs> I mean, who? Who knows? I mean, I, I, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't count on it, but, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, ki kinds of folks out there. So I'm sure, I'm sure some people will be lodging all kinds of, uh, complaints, but, you know, I, for me, you know, I just want a really cool immersive experience that's fun. And I think in, in the next five years, that's attainable. I don't think we're going to see in five years a metaverse and, you know, the, the way people talk about, it. but I think we're going to see some really cool, um, you know, external hardware. And I think we're going to see some really cool, um, you know, titles and, you know, maybe in the next five years, even some AAA titles. I mean, who knows? So the next five years, it'll be the year 2019. I I will take you up on that uh, uh, notion. I, I I think there will be a metaverse. I don't. I, obviously, it won't be the Matrix, but it'll be something uh, almost physical that people will refer to. I think. I mean, it just you know at the pace things are accelerating. I'm just confused. Where I what even what year am I? What day it is? It's just insane. Um, but oh, it's bizarre. Yeah, it's it's a, it, it it really is, but it's you know it, it's really cool to be um, you know sort of along for the ride, Hell yeah. and uh, you know I, I'm just I'm having a blast, and like I said, I mean to me that's what it's all about. I mean to to sort of you know reinvigorate my love for for gaming and uh, and sense of community and meeting cool people and Reddit, and I mean to me it's just been a really fun uh, few months. Um, Because you know, really, a lot of it's new to me, and that's why, sort of, you know, my my understanding of of a lot of the tech concepts, um, you know, I'm really limited. Because you know, I just I didn't grow up in this world. I, I you know, I grew up in in a in a console world, and and uh, so you know, the, you know, it's a bit of a learning curve, but uh, I'm getting there. Let's talk a little bit about the world that you used to reside in, meaning the console world, uh, because yeah. I used to live in there too. It was it was. It was a, a happy place where we were. I was at least I was con, con, uh, content with the power, you know, the you know the graphical limitations of the PS3. I never, I didn't get a PS4. But you know, let me ask you, but what is your favorite? If you have to take two consoles uh, and drop them all, and drop, and I have to drop you off in the middle of an island, which two consoles would you take? I mean, pa past, present, that sort of thing. Yes. Oh wow! Um, I mean, I think the PS4 just because you know the, the, the all, all the modern conveniences, mm -hmm. and then I would think um, either either the original uh, Nintendo uh, or maybe the Super Nintendo, because uh, most of my college experience was uh, Super Nintendo, Mario Kart, and uh, uh, you know playing playing Double O Seven. So uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, what are okay? Well, so so it's you answered that uh, like a scholar and gentleman. So so let's move on to the <laughs> next question. What is you know it, what are your top five favorite video games of all time? Now I have to. You're gonna be on that island for 30 years. I think I, I played this game with Ian McNeil, and he and yeah, he he was uh, pretty entertaining. But uh, for you, what are your top five favorite games of all time? Wow. Fuck. That's that's not an easy one. <laughs> um, 
you know what? Uh, I think I think Far Cry is up there. Whoa, um, that's a good game. Yeah, I just I really I really had a lot of fun in how expand. I mean, to me, if that was a VR experience, how expansive and how beautiful and getting to the top of a mountain and just you know grabbing a hang glider and taking a rip. I mean, to me, that was uh, just such a beautiful game and and really the first um, you know sort of a. a kind of a role play. I mean, not just a strict first person shooter that I really loved. Um, probably the original, uh, Zelda, just because to me that represents a lot of the, the, my early gaming experiences. And, and I, and I've told this story before, but when I was a kid, um, my mother, she would, uh, it was pretty cute. I mean, I was, I was little. And so at night she would go down to the basement where we had our, our Nintendo set up and she would, work on levels of Zelda. So then the next day when we play together, she could, you know, properly help and, and have good suggestions. That's so awesome. she was a pretty cool mom, uh, helping her little guy with Zelda as a kid. So I think Zelda is definitely in there. Um, uh, Mario Kart. Absolutely. Um, you know, I would think 007, uh, from super Nintendo, but I played it not that long ago, and I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when yeah. I was younger. Yeah, it's a weird um, thing when you go back to are, them. What is that? Is that three or four? You are at four right now. Mario Kart, 007, uh, Far Cry, and Zelda. Jeez. Uh, and another would be uh, probably... There's, I'd have to think about which of the uh, – it, it'd be a toss-up between a Call of Duty or a Battlefield, and I just can't really decide. But mm. uh, maybe maybe Black Ops 2. We, we, are, we are about to nerd battle. <laughs> Because yeah, because I am I am a battlefield guy, uh, and I and I want to know your position on why Black Ops Two is uh, so highly regarded. For me or for others? For you. Um, you know, just a lot of hours. That's really it. I just put in a, a ton of time, and oh. and and I've played uh, just a lot of multiplayer with with friends and had a lot of fun. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. No, that's that, that's really it. I mean, but Battlefield. I mean. It, it, to me, it's a way better experience. I mean, the online experience. I mean, for me, the thing that was always frustrating is when you uh, picked up a brand new Call of Duty and just got worked within the first hour of the game even being released. Yeah. I mean, so so at least Battlefield, you have a shot. Yeah. I know. I I think Call of Duty is super addicting. I mean, and the and those campaigns. I remember from at least Modern Warfare Two was probably one of my favorite campaigns uh, in a first person in a first person shooter of all time for some reason it just sticks with me uh, it's i don't know it was it was a really good campaign um but yeah no i just like you to I, me, the, it's all about i got obsessed with uh, with zombies yeah Black Ops too. <laughs> to me like that that and so and so many hours with friends i mean I, you know i've lived in so many different places and and over the years it, it's it's been nice to to kind of be able to have a gaming night with a couple of your buddies playing zombies and, 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 you know, with four guys that, you know, are actually going to, you know, stick to their role. And, it, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's been a, a fun social experience, but, um, but battlefield is, I mean, just, it doesn't really get much better. You know, they're, you know, they're both really good games and especially, you know, I think it's who you play with matters a lot when you're playing in those multiplayer servers, for sure. I, I used to play with my, I, I play, you know, I still play with my grandpa and my little cousin. And we're That's just, cool. yeah, we're just destroying people there. But it's, yeah, it, it, you know, EA has done some fuckery to Battlefield 4 lately. What do you, what do you think about zombies in, in first person shooters? And, and when do you think we're going to start seeing dinosaurs? Is there like, a, is there going to be a cycle of, of these sorts of things? I want to, I want to know if there, we'll ever see something more aside from zombies. I don't know. I think, I mean, uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, now we have this movement towards aliens, but, uh, mm. but no, I think zombies, I mean, you know, it's, it's too present, you know, at, at the main, at, you know, presently it, it, it's too, you know, it's everywhere in, in media in, in all forms. I mean, we think about zombies when we, you know, watch walking dead mm -hmm. or, you know, w whatever. Um, and I think that, you know, so we have it on television. I think we have, you know, zombies in our, in our games. Um, and, you know, from a lot of, for a lot of folks, it, you know, 
that are looking at the world. Um, you know, there's a lot of these, you know, sort of survivalist guys that, you know, are sort of, you know, quote unquote zombie preppers. And, you know, so I think, I think zombies represent so many things to so many people. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's here to stay, but I think that you're going to see it calm down a little bit in gaming. I mean, just because it's, it, it's overdone as a, uh, you know, as a genre, but, um, Kind of like the zombies the war- are fun. They are no, they're super fun. But but they, it's a good time. It's it's good to take a breather. Uh, you know, kind of like the World War Two shooter. Remember, there was an era where all we had was World War Two shooters. Um, oh yeah, so. and, and and loved every one of those. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Medal of Honor. Yeah, I, definitely. Uh, in terms of uh, where was I going with this one? I, I was going to ask you about PlayStation zombies, dinosaurs. What is there something that? You, oh, zombies. There we go. <laughs> You, you are. I, I think you're right. I think that zombies aren't going to go away, especially because of our. I, you know, just dying from 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 a zombie outbreak would just be such a shitty way to die, man. I've been watching. Uh, I've been paying attention to the news lately. I don't know if you've seen what's been happening in in, in Ghana and Liberia and uh, in in Guinea. There's this Ebola, Ebola outbreak happening. Mm-hmm. Ebola is fucking insane, man. The more you read about it, it's like your your organs liquef- liquefy from the inside. Holy shit! Yeah you, pretty, yeah, you pretty much just crack and bleed. Yeah. Um, no, it's 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 a it's terrible, and and I think, I mean, that's for most people, you know, and and, and in so many different ways, zombies represents collapses in 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 government, finance, um, you know, uh, you know, viral outbreaks, you know, all these different things. So it basically, I think, for a lot of people, zombie represents you know shit hitting the fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I think. You know, I think it's it's definitely going to be around, but uh, yeah, I mean, the world's a crazy place, and uh, yeah, you know, I mean, not even to get into all that stuff, but yeah, it's 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 crazy to think about um, you know viral outbreaks and what that'll mean, and uh, you know how important our our our, uh, our mighty dollar will end up in the in, in the end when you know we have a, a, fi- a you know collapsed financial uh, system, but you know, oh, you know, I'm just. Not a big, Tuesday I'm not talk. a big prepper or anything, but I'm just saying. I mean, I know, I know that you know, I know that people are into this stuff, and you know, who knows, anything can happen. I agree because I don't think that we, I, I don't know how much control a government could possibly have against a viral outbreak. I mean, I just don't. I mean, the CDC. I wonder what their budget is like. I wonder how many people they employ. I, I, I and then. Fuck, it's just insane or, to think about Or that. mishandling. I mean, if somebody were to mishandle something mm-hmm. within CDC and somehow it got out, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's wild to think. Um, but, uh, I mean, we're, we're a society that's over-medicated, and um, you could definitely see a situation where we, uh, you know, there's you know, strains of, of, of different bacteria and, and viruses that become more and more resistant to, you know, our, our, uh, our medical methods. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Crazy man, and, and you definitely see the uh, uh, you definitely see the uh, I mean the but the risk the risk potentials here and and then definitely you know especially you know since I think we're going uh, right in we're walking right into an age where uh, we will start bioengineering life and messing around with genetics and all these different things I think that yeah. Man, Resident Evil was far ahead of its time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. It'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm one of those people. I just, I, I think all about some of the nastiest, craziest shit that the world could possibly see, and then if, for some reason, I try to come up with solutions to those to those problems. And here it is. I have the solution to the zombie apocalypse. Uh, so because we're gonna have to we're we're gonna have to quarantine people, right? And you and depending on how uh, you're probably gonna notice, I didn't think this through very well. Uh, but you're probably gonna see how <laughs> uh, you're, you're gonna see how people are going to or governments are gonna tell people, hey, stay in your houses, chill, everybody, chill the fuck out, don't go to work, don't go to school. Uh, but, but then how are we going to make money? How are we, how are we to live? How are we going to be human? Then the government will, you know, pair up with Oculus and Facebook and say, everybody gets a rift. And now all you do, you know, for the time being, as long as the virus is out there, airborne somewhere, you know, you stay in your home, you cover up your windows and you go inside the metaverse and until it dissipates. 
that's just how a bunch of people on the rift coaster all day. Yeah, that's how virtual reality will save the world. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. That's funny. Either or, well, I mean that that's a solution. I don't know if the solution, Chris, but it's certainly a solution. Def- well, yeah. If if uh, <laughs> Obama call me, if if ever if the shit goes down, <laughs> you know what to call. Uh, um, Obama, if you're listening. Hit Chris up. Yeah. <laughs> He's got solutions, man. I got, yeah, I got your back, dude. Um, in terms of... Uh, what is your biggest fear for virtual reality? I mean, in terms of uh, what can... De- you know, what could stop the technology? And then... Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, want I want to go there. Let's go there. I want to know what is your oh, biggest I, fear in terms of what could stop the, the, the technology in the, in the community? And then I want to know what would be your biggest fear once the technology becomes successful. Well, I mean, from from a, a failure perspective, I mean, at this point, seeing the amount of money that's that's behind uh, this, yeah. but my fear is is that, you know, well, I mean, geez, there's there's a number of fears. I mean, the way I see it potentially could fail is if really, I mean, it, this all comes down to whether your average consumer wants this product and will adopt this as their new, you know, way. And I think it comes down to, you know, does the average Joe, do they like putting on an HMD and, uh, and, and having this experience? Um, or do they not? Do they prefer just hanging out and, and sit, sitting with their con- console? And I think it really comes down to, you know, which, which are people going to adopt? Are, are they going to be into this stuff? And the truth is, is that while, you know, the enthusiast may buy some, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, 50,000 units or whatever the number of, units are pre-ordered or whatever, however many thousands of units. I mean, we need to be hitting millions for AAA um, developers to be getting involved in sort of these big names getting involved. So, you know, the fear is, is that it never gets widely adopted. The, 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 the sort of the big developers with, with the, the big budgets, you know, never get involved and, and don't, and don't make content. And it sort of falls by the wayside as something that, that, that we enthusiasts are into and, and, and like the content, but we never see the real immersive experience and the real integration that we're all hoping for. So I think that we really need, um, you know, consumers to adopt this. Now, does it help that, uh, you see Jimmy Fallon putting it on his face or these different, you know, pop stars, you know, getting into it or seeing, I mean, there was a, what was it the king of some country? I saw the picture of the other day uh, with with a rift on. So I mean that's all amazing and that's all you know moving this in the right direction. But you know we you know I think that the VR community needs this hype to continue and um, and and we need it to last a couple years. So when we see you know CV one CV two you know those sort of things that that it's already at such a nice experience where we don't have vr sickness we don't have lag we we we, you know motion tracking and everything is perfect i mean if it's a one-to-one experience i think that your average guy will still put it on his face but i think that you know most people if it's not a perfect experience they'll grow tired and stop putting the rift on yeah and 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 so it's got to be compelling enough and 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 maybe that's you know what will bring you know tons more users are you know is the social media folks you know i'm sure there's a lot of people people that will never use it for gaming mm-hmm. uh and you know geez i mean there, there's there's applications for the technology you know in so many different industries whether it's medical whether it's in you know science i mean there's so many different different ways and, and and reasons to have this technology but as far as seeing a consumer version that that i want to see um you know that, that that's geared to, to to gaming and 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 all this stuff and, and media experiences and movies and you know riff max and that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, you know, it's going to need to be a compelling device. And if if it's not, and it doesn't really, I mean, obviously we're sold, right? DK one blew my mind, and to me, anything beyond DK one is just gravy. Yeah, I'm just still average, I'm still fifty fifty. Can, Sorry, go ahead. That was a bad joke. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I, I got some like little feedback. I didn't yeah. hear it. But I was going to say that you know your average gamer, I think, were you know I'll speak for myself too. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all kind of a bunch of entitled jerks, and the and the, and the idea that you know it's like we complain you know uh, about these free demos. It's like you know, oh, I'm so sorry that you know I wasted your time with this free entertainment. <laughs> um, you know, so you know, I think that, that we're all kind of entitled jerks. And so, you know, if it's not a, a perfect experience, 
people are gonna are gonna you know get pissed off, and I think that you'll see it fall by the wayside. That's that's my big fear. Yeah. We, as far as fear of success. Yeah. I mean, geez, the the, the fear of success uh, really is just more that um, the gaming stuff falls by the wayside, and that it becomes a a social tool for Facebook and and not a um, and, and not really the, the, the gaming device that we're hoping for. Yeah, and the NSA. I, 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 yeah. But I don't see that happening. Yeah. Let me ask you about, you know, going back to the first question and the, your, your answer in, in terms of how much is it a compelling, how, you know, in terms of selling units, how much is it the, a, a, actually having a compelling device with a compelling experience and how much is it, you know, in terms of what's going to make it successful, the message, the perceived message that the consumers and the customers are, are out there getting by, by the advertisers? I think that thankfully now Facebook has enabled Oculus the marketing budget that they will need to go out there and make sure that the world knows what the Oculus Rift knows, what the Oculus Rift, Rift is. But in terms of you know, I want to ask you like if you if you're if you're in the marketing department at, at Oculus, what are you thinking? How do you appeal to grandmas and you know and mothers and and and, and cousins and and fathers and you know what I'm saying? Like now, it used to be this thing for gamers. Now it's for everyone, and it's it and, and I truly think it is. But how do you market that? How do you tell people that? Hey. This is going to be fucking awesome, but it's not just for games. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, maybe maybe you put. Uh, I mean, to be honest, if if I were them, I mean, Palmer would be my, my my little poster boy, and I would take him on Ellen and all these different talk shows and talk about how he's this nice, wholesome kid who's worth hundreds of millions, and he came from you know X and made Y, and what a success. And, and look how cool his his device is. Um, I, and I and I would I would I would hit up. I uh, mean, to, to me, that's what I would be doing. I'd be hitting up talk shows and telling this amazing story, and and then showing off the device. Palmer going out to these day show talk show hosts and being amongst you know uh, going to the soccer mom audience I, that would make sense. He's definitely cougar bait. But you know, in terms of grandpa and and just you know. Well, Hey, well, Grandpa listens to Grandma. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and, and, maybe, and maybe you bring. And I've always thought that you know, once you deal with some of the the, the issues and the latency that, that that would cause some of these the, these things like VR sickness. I mean, once once you have it kind of hammered down, I mean, I think that retirement communities would benefit greatly from these experiences. Mm -hmm. I think you know, these idea, these virtual tours, the virtual museum, the virtual whatever. I mean, what a cool experience if, if, if I am, am bed, bedridden and will never get to see the Sistine Chapel, but I can put on this device and by myself feel like I'm privately in the chapel looking around, you know, maybe I, 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 I don't, you know, smell it, but I can sure see it. And, um, and, and what a cool experience. And I think that, you know, this could bring that experience to a lot of people that otherwise won't get to see a lot of things. Um, so, I mean, I think that there's a lot of different ways, but I think the biggest is, you know, you know, make, you know, sort of the community is, I think its biggest, um, advocate. I mean, the community every day sells this product and this idea mm -hmm. with let's play videos with Reddit posts mm -hmm. with, I mean, the Facebook, the, excuse me, the Facebook acquisition itself. I mean, the traffic on Reddit alone blew up. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. So, I mean, even just the story itself and, and, and all of us, you know, your podcast, I mean, this is more information out there. There's going to be somebody who stumbles across and says, hey, what's this? Oh, I didn't know this was around. What's the Rift? Oh, and, and you know, and, and start, uh, you know, exploring it. And, and obviously VR isn't just the Rift. I mean, we're going to be seeing the Morpheus and all these other products. So I think, you know, you know, this this wave that, 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 that we're all riding, I think, is going to help, you know, market itself. But beyond that, I mean, get that kid on Ellen. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> going to your second question, your second answer uh, in terms of the success of VR. Do you does the do questions of privacy ever cross your mind, uh, knowing that Facebook is such a uh, 
you know, is such a buddy buddy with the NSA. Does does that bother you at all? I mean, yes, it's. I, I'm going to admit already, it's way too early to say that that's going to happen. But seeing the track record of this government, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to spy on you. And so, uh, I, does that creep you out? I mean, or if the possibility that the NSA will be watching what you see through your eyes in well, VR? Well. I mean, the truth is, and this may be a very apathetic perspective, but like, do I actually think that the NSA gives a flying fuck what I'm doing in my house? I mean, like, I am not that important or cool. So I just, I, I just don't think it's going to impact me. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think that, um, or, that that's going to happen. I mean, and, and this is all presupposing that any of that stuff is even happening. And I'm not saying it's yeah. not. I'm just not you know, well-versed enough on the subject matter to, to, to speak intelligently on it. But what I can say is that whatever I have going on, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and, you know, there's some of us that, that, that is, is, you know, not the case, but, um, but for me, I don't see it playing a role. I mean, you know, and I know that I've seen posts of people talking about, you know, capturing your retina and I mean, that'd be some freaky stuff, but I, I don't, is that even possible? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, coming from them, I would uh, give them a, a huge leeway into what is possible because they get some fuckery going out there. It's crazy. I in, oh, 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 all right. So so I'll take that. The, that uh, yeah, you know, you're you're a bit apathetic towards the NSA because at the end of the day, I agree. You know, we're we're just we're just dudes talking, and we're just yeah. Dudes, they're not after you and yeah. I, but you know, hey, who knows, right? Yeah, uh, but but conceptually, but conceptually, yeah, privacy is a big, big issue for me, and and I think, um, you know, I mean, not not only but privacy, but but you know, copyright. I mean, and, and they're, they're 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 not related, but you know, it's something that we haven't touched on. But but I wanted to say is that you know, it, it drives me crazy of the amount of infringement that I see, you know, moment by moment and and minute by minute. Um, you know, with, uh, with some of this stuff. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, and sort of back to our idea of, you know, crediting developers, it's nice to see, you know, obviously there's fair use, but it's nice to see people, you know, giving credit where credit's due. Um, but, you know, I'm very concerned about all these things and I'm really concerned about, about privacy. And, um, but for me, like I said, I, I don't see that being a thing. Yeah, no, it, 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 there's the possibility that it will, and it's possibility that it won't, and it, if it doesn't, oh well, uh, I mean, if it does happen, then I guess, you know, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to deal with it, um, or... Well, I mean, we, well, we all have an interest in having our rights protected, whether it's, 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 uh, you know, our rights to, to intellectual property, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, there's been, it's been very interesting seeing what's going on with YouTube and, and, and the, the backlash and sort of the changes that went on to their content ID system. Um, so it's, it's been interesting and, and I've been on the receiving end of that. It's been interesting having, you know, doing let's play videos and, and having a developer say, will you do this? And then somebody making a claim, I mean, obviously not the developer, but, but, and not being able to resolve it and, and, and the frustrations when, when, you know, Kane and I are so passionate about respecting the rights that, that, that people own mm -hmm. and, and not producing, I mean, you see people all the time doing demos that show, you know, that this is a demo version of, of unity or whatever, and you're not supposed to be doing that. And it drives me nuts, but, um, you know, I, I, I do like seeing things done properly and, and that, in that sense. Um, so, but it's been interesting being on the receiving end of that, you know, being so passionate about protecting, you know, others rights and crediting people properly. It's been, it's been very, you know, frustrating by getting shut down so many times, uh, with YouTube, but things have been so much better. So, um, you know, but yeah, absolutely. Privacy is a huge concern. And, uh, and I think generally on the internet, privacy is a big concern. We, we see it. I mean, we see it with social media. Yeah, no, it's especially because, you know, I think that uh, the metaverse or whatever Facebook is going to create is going to uh, reveal our true humanity to all of us. And and what I say, what I'm trying to say here is that I think that most people, not most people, that's a silly generalization, but I, I think a lot of people go about life thinking that they know everything there is to know. And, f and what the internet has helped me realize is that I don't know shit. I don't know anything, man. I I, I, I I try to wing it here and there. I try to, yeah, but but for the most part, I I just I'm, I'm I have to sort of humble myself to the realization that 
especially when I read these Reddit threads sometimes, I'm like, you know, it's, you know when you go to R Ask Science or, or, or all the, you know, the true oh, yeah. Reddit, there, there are some experts in there. There's some people who, I mean, either you're oh, yeah. writing really convincingly well or you're a motherfucking genius expert. And so that humbles me. It really does. And I think what the metaverse is going to do possibly is it's going to reveal to us all that we're all idiots um and it, because you won't be able to hide your mistakes from people because i think that uh, because i really honestly think that uh either facebook will be recording everything you do <laughs> for to sell it to advertisers and 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 replay it back to them or whatever or the government will um either or it's it, i think the metaverse will reveal how we're all so dumb and and then and then and then here's where it gets crazy okay if it wasn't already crazy well uh yeah you're in, you're on this podcast sorry you're you're on the roller coaster ride it, it, what's going to happen i it could happen is that people are going to realize holy shit uh, we're all dumb um let's all become one mind okay i took it way too far sorry that was i <laughs> Well, but I mean, but uh, like, and obviously, yes, you took it too far. But no, but you know, the way that the way that, that even the way Reddit works, um, the collaborative efforts. I mean, you know, there's there's tons of of, uh, of threads about somebody saying, "Help me with this," or I, you know, do, do, you know, can you explain this to me? Like, I'm five. I mean, and it's amazing how people come out and say, "Yeah, I I know this. This is what I I bring to the, the table." Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and it's and it's 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 very interesting seeing and now how that can can go a step further in the metaverse you know i, I don't i can't even understand or 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 just even imagine what that'll look like but the idea that um you know how collaborative things are already mm -hmm. um i mean seeing that in the metaverse i mean I, i don't even know what that means but but i want to see it yeah no that's a the, thanks for bringing up that uh, the uh, that analogy of using reddit be, because reddit is that thing it's like it's it's a compilation of human knowledge uh sh you know human perspectives all bundled up into a hive mind through an, an algorithmic voting system um it's and and i think that what what is happening in reddit you see this hive mind i you know it's you see this unison of opinions you know when you give an upvote to a big a big opinion i think you know you are contributing to the hive mind uh because I don't, I'm a huge lurker. Like I, I lurk a lot, and I, you know, I don't post my own comments a lot. But when I see the top one, and I'm like, ah, I agree with that. I'm gonna put that in my pocket of arguments for later, uh, so I can practice yeah, in the no, shower. But then I think about how you know this, this, this thing that is ha unraveling in, in re on Reddit could happen in the metaverse when, when the internet becomes materialized right before our eyes. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, to me, the, the things that, that, that blow my mind are, are experiences. And I, I mean, I, you know, every day I'm always, uh, I'm always checking, checking Reddit, of course. Uh, I'm an addict, uh, like, like the rest of us. But, um, you know, I don't know if you saw that, that picture. It was, there was a couple pictures. I think the guy was in his, I think he was 93 and, um, he, he was a paratrooper. He was a veteran and he wanted to go for another jump. I don't know if you saw that, but, um, it was really cool. I mean, here's a guy in his 90s saying, I want to jump out of a plane. I did it X number of years ago, World War II. I'm a vet. Nobody's going to take me up there. I'm too old. You know, would anybody, does anybody know, can they help? Mm. And, you know, within no time, you know, this guy got the entire, you know, all of Reddit basically, you know, offered to, to pay for it, to take him, to jump with him, to document it. Um, and, you know, in the end, he did it his own way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so cool that because of Reddit, There's a 93-year-old man who wanted to do something, and it was on his bucket list, and he was able to do it. So, I mean, I, I just think, you know, that to me, that, like you said, the collaborative mind, the idea of somebody say, I want to do this, and all these other people help and, and make that uh, a reality. And, and you couldn't do that without this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to take that a step further in the metaverse, I mean, I don't know what that's going to mean. I mean, you know, we couldn't do these things before this sort of, you know, um, So this sort of you know collaborative you know voting system. Mm -hmm. um, what will what will the metaverse then make possible? And, and I and, and I don't think we'll know till it exists. Yeah, no, I, mean, I all, think so. all all this stuff is unraveling. The law doesn't even exist on 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 most of this stuff. So I mean, we're all in such a, a you know 
such an early stage. We don't even know what all this is going to look like. Yeah. You know, I, but it's funny because we see the glimpses of what it can become we, through Rift oh, yeah. Theater, through, I mean, all these experiences. And you're, I'm like, uh, it's like I'm getting a, 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 a sneak peek into this new amazing thing that, uh, you know, again, who knows how far away it is from becoming a thing. But I feel like I'm watching people, you know, such as yourselves experiencing it. Uh, well, for me, it's funny. One of my favorite, and I and I've mentioned this before, but one of my favorite um, VR experiences, and it was just a moment. Um, but we were in the Rift Max Theater. It was Kane, myself, and the developer, um, uh, one of the other developers, um, uh, Mike Arms, because uh, he and he and Kane are co-developers on that project. So it, the three of us were chatting at the top of the theater, and Mike says, "Oh, you know, I got I gotta go. I talk to you guys later." And rather than just logging off, he proceeds to walk down the stairs and he gets about halfway. He stops, he turns and he looks back at us, kind of gives us like a, you know, a head nod, turns and walks away. And it was this, this, this moment where I remember looking at Kane and then also saying it to Mike, like, did that just happen? Like it was this moment that you experience every single day on the street or in your office or whatever, or at school, um, but to see it in this virtual space and for it to feel completely real, like your buddy saying, you know, all right, I'm out, peace, and turning around saying, giving you a head nod before he leaves. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was, it, to me, and, and I've had such cool gaming experiences, but for, to, to me, that was the coolest VR experience, the moment where it just, it was like, it was one-to-one. Wow. It, like, you know, it was just nuts. That's so funny that you were cognizant of that happening to you. That's really that's really cool. Wow. Uh, well, I, if you heard, there's a there was a guy posted talking about how he had some some sort of social anxiety, and it wasn't until he put on the rift and he realized while wearing the rift that he was avoiding eye contact. Mm-hmm. He didn't realize his whole life he had been acting that way. It wasn't until he got into a virtual space did he realize how he actually really is. Yeah, but that was a very very cool kind of uh, you know groundbreaking experience for somebody. And I think we all we all have them in different ways. I uh, I think VR will have some uh, profound impacts on people uh, when it becomes mainstream. I, I just I have no doubt in doubt in my mind, and I, I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, just how you're saying, you know, we don't know what the metaverse is going to be. I don't I have no idea how profoundly how profoundly it'll affect us uh, as human beings. I mean, just. Uh, from the body of research that there that there is out there, I don't think there is, you know, uh, research out there that's that is uh, measuring the implications of a high fidelity, super low latency, you know, um, ultra amazing, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, virtual reality experience that Oculus is about to put out. I I don't think there's long term studies on what that is going to do to people's brains. I mean, if face uh, not Facebook. Video games, they rewire our brains. We know that gamers have faster twitch muscles and their fingertips and better hand-eye coordination. We kn- so, so we know that games rewire our heads. I wonder if having adding that extra level of immersion will, will do something extra. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, who, who, who knows? I mean, I think, like I said, I mean, this is such a, a new, a, like, this, this area. I mean, now, we've always known... Uh, about VR conceptually and you know everybody's wanted this but it's not till now did, did we have the technology to make it possible I mean I remember in the 90s like these really crappy you know VR experiences um, and you pay you know five or ten bucks for like a couple minutes to, to try it um, and it was cool and you knew that eventually something would happen but it just wasn't there yet and it's finally here so I mean we're at such a, a, a we're, we're at such a, a you know the, the infant state. I mean, this is so in its infancy that we don't even have a consumer version. There's not even a product. Yeah. I mean, we have a development kit. And that's it. Yeah. So much. So it's amazing how so much hype, so much movement, so much momentum is, and yet, and yet, you you point at that out that simply there is no product out there yet, and it's just no. amazing how it'll. I, I, yeah. Like, well, the majority of people that if you say, you know, VR or Rift, they have no idea what you're talking about. And I mean 99.9% of people, even gamers, there's people that, you know, may, they, they, they know about, you know, VR conceptually, but they they uh, have never heard of a product 
that actually it, it where it's playable today. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think it, it really is. I mean, this is an absolute infant stage, and, um, and and the amount of hype at this stage without a product, I mean, it's just and it's amazing. And we're still, you know, probably a year away from from that place. I hope you're where, wrong on that. Oh where man, kids. No, but who knows? I mean, I you know, whatever. I mean, time time. It, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Yes, but, I agree. You know, th- there'll be a time when people. This is the new you know thing that people want. You know, over the Christmas holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, but we're not even there yet. I mean, this is a step beyond, you know, uh, from from you know Palmer, do, you know, making a do-it-yourself kit. I mean, we have to, you know, remember what the origins of this whole thing, you know, was it was never to be, you know, where it's headed now. Yeah, this is. A, I don't know if this is an easy question to answer for you, but seeing all of this, seeing all this development and all, you know, and this story happening and being a part of it, you know. Uh, does this make it feel like VR is going to be even more real than before? Do you, are you are you more certain than before about the the path you are taking in life, um, or are you still you know holding out some uncertainty for the future? You mean from the the, the from the f- the future for VR? I'm mean, yeah. absolutely certain that um, you know you <laughs> listen. I mean you know. What Oculus VR did is they said, let's get the best and the brightest. And, and that's what they've done. And yeah. that's, the, I mean, you guys, you, you have Carmack. I mean, forget about it. I mean, th- th- their team is so insane yeah. that they can do anything. I mean, Carmack is straight up uh, like that. I mean, the guy's a genius. Is, um, yeah. and, and I'm not, and I'm not, like, it's not, uh, it's not like coming from a fanboy. I mean, I didn't even know who he was, you know, a year ago. So, I mean, th- this is, you know, and, and just because I, I wasn't in that world, but now actually looking into who this guy is, I mean, the, the guy's a rocket scientist. I mean, the guy's absolute genius. Yeah. And so you have amazing, amazing bright minds. And now you've added all the money behind it that it needs. Um, I absolutely think this is going to go. These guys are not going to give up on this technology. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now there's money behind it. And Facebook doesn't really give a shit if they make money on the hardware. Um, so you've taken that out of the equation. So that's exciting. So, so you know, you know, you, it'll be affordable, and it's going to be awesome, and they're going to actually be able to to really push. Um, I mean, if if this if this never happened, um, I, I think that it would be a, a slow evolution, and because you know there's so much behind it now and so much hype, you're going to see this thing absolutely fast tracked. You're going to see technology, um, you know, jump, you know, decades in a year. Uh, of where we would have been had this not happened. So from that perspective, I think that, you know, it's a pretty certain uh, future for, for VR. What it's going to look like, I don't know, but it's going to be in our lives. Yeah, most certainly will. Um, and it's going to be, uh, yeah, I just, having the conversation about uh, what it, you know, what it might be. And then and then I'm going to go back to this conversation and, and be like, Man, Flake had it right. He he was he was right about this. He he was right about this whole uh, you know NSA not giving a shit or, or you know I think it's hmm that's why I ask these random questions about the future because I feel like you know I'm gonna come back later on and listen to this and be like man he was on to something. Um, well, and, and I think none of us know, and that's part of the excitement that yeah. we're we're all you know stoked to be a part of something and and be enthusiasts and geek out together and all of that stuff, um, you know, and, and the hobby aspect and 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 so you know I think that we're all along for this ride and it's really cool to to see it develop. Um, you know, I'm a little jealous for 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 the kids that you know, are being born today. That I mean, by the time they care about gaming. I mean, they're going to have the sickest VR experiences, um, you know, and, uh, and, and we'll all have, uh, heads full of gray hair, uh, if we're lucky. But, um, but I think, I think it, it's, it's a certain future and I think it's going to be a pretty damn cool one. Yeah. And I'm just excited to be along for the ride, man. I agree. And if you thought that you and I as gamers were entitled, wait till these kids grow up and grow oh, up. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, I, it, isn't that a cycle though? How when we, uh, get old and, and try to, you know, uh, nag on our grandkids, these whimper snappers having sex with their robots and, you know, uh, and their virtual reality. I feel like we're, we're going to be, uh, the roles will be switched. How, our, for example, our generation nowadays, we're, we're, viewed, we're viewed as lazy, 
uh, as you know, not very uh, oh yeah, distracted. Why you know? Uh, but I think we're gonna do the same thing. That you know, the the roles will will get reversed when we grow up later, later, later on. Um, I mean, the truth the truth is is that there's really not too much. Uh, about us that's all that unique and we just go through the same patterns and uh you know this is how it was generations before and it'll always be like that you know we'll we'll uh we'll think that we'll never grow up and eventually you grow up too and you you know look you know you know back at uh you know your attitudes change towards things that you thought never would but um yeah, no, I think I think I think kids were, are absolutely going to be entitled and not appreciate. I mean, it's like a it's like a Louis C.K. bit, you know, when he goes on about appreciating cell phone technology and how amazing it is. Um, when people are complaining about you know how much they hate Verizon or whatever, he's you know he always says it's amazing, you know, you're, it's going to space. I mean, it's true. You know, all this technology is absolutely amazing. Like I could not tell you how a cell phone works. I mean, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. I mean. You know, all this stuff is absolutely amazing. My computer is amazing. My internet's amazing. My the Oculus Rift's amazing. The video camera, like, it's all amazing. And and uh, um, I, you know, I'm just I'm just stoked to to have the the tech that I have. And and uh, and you know, it really is. And and I think that you know, you know, to, we we don't appreciate the things that we grew up with, and that's just how it is. But for for me, I didn't grow up with any of this stuff, so you know, th- this is all so new. But uh, yeah, there's you know. You know, the kids that are being born right now, they're not going to appreciate any of this. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to know what a book looks like or is. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. A library. Do they even exist? <laughs> yeah. Well, mind blown. You know. Uh, yeah, brick and mortar. I mean, who knows? Like, it's, you know, there's so much, there's so much, uh, you know, useless space. Yeah. Pennies, post office. What are they for? Yeah, I, well, well, I like the post it, right? office, uh, but I mean that's a whole nother discussion. I, I I remember watching a TED talk a while ago about how uh, there was this researcher or this speaker. He was talking about how the person who will live 500 years, uh, or the people who will live 500 years, will live are already living amongst us. We will have the technology in our lifetimes to extend our our, our you know our death uh, and. Uh, and going into that, you know, because you did mention how, where, yes, for the lot, for the majority, uh, for the lo- in large part, we are like every other generation that came before us, but we're in this, we're not special, we we're just in special circumstances surrounding, uh, you know, with the surrounding technology that we have, right? So yeah. I want to make sure I reach, you know, above 500 years old. I, I want to see. What else is there to see, like you know, in the next five hundred years? What about you? Well, it'd be very, it'd be very cool, but uh, you know, don't don't count on it. I mean, to be honest, what you know, when 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 everything starts hurting and I can't, you know, get up anymore. I mean, just put me down. I think we <laughs> we we treat our animals better. So I mean, I you know, I I I I, I don't want to live five hundred years. Um, um, I mean, if I could do it and, and feel as good as I am today, then then sign me up. But um. Boy, would that wreak havoc on on uh, on our world! I mean, we can barely feed uh, feed ourselves as it is. But um, yeah, the, the future is going to be crazy. The next five hundred years, I mean, wow! I mean, the, the the technology. I mean, I it just it's just crazy. I mean, year to year, what what happens and 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 the way things develop and medicine and and, and all these different things. And uh, I think, like I said, I mean, we're still in the infancy of all of that. I mean, we don't you know really understand um, you know how the brain works. I mean, you know, in, in a really deep, uh, detailed uh, level. So I mean, uh, you know, there, there's still so much, and uh, and you know, our kids, uh, kids, kids, kids will will have it pretty cool. Yeah, I'm. Tr- my plan is to make it to the year 2087. I think I can make it to 100, and and, and my and I hope is that I'll have. My hope is that I'll you know by by 2087 we will have, you know, 3D printers printing out organs routinely, uh, and, and 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 that's all I need. I just need an extra heart, an extra liver, uh, an extra penis, and and I'm set. I'm set for the next 500 years. But, but <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but what about you know? A meaning, and I want to catch that tangent earlier where you were talking about how you know if if I if I were allowed that ability to. Have this have the same body that we have now, or feel the same way that we have now for the next 500 years? You you would do it, right? I mean, that would be something. Oh yeah, absolutely. What do you think? Would you, would you get lonely? Would you? Uh, how do you think life would be for you if if you tried to live 500 years Doctor Who style? 
Well, I guess, I mean, if that, if, if, if everybody else, uh, did not, uh, and I was the only one living 500 years, it'd be lonely, but otherwise it would be lonely because we'd all be living 500 years. Um, so, I mean, definitely not on the loneliness perspective, but, um, yeah, no, I, I think, well, you know, when you're talking about printing organs, I don't know if you saw that, that scalp that they, um, like it was like a, the top section of a skull that they were able to, uh, to print. Whoa. I don't know if you saw that, but it was actually used. I, I don't know what the type of plastic is, but, um, you know, it, the, I guess the body doesn't reject it. But it was crazy. There was a girl, her, the way that her, her skull was basically thickening and creating so much pressure on her brain that they had to open up the top of her skull to let that pressure off. Um, and they actually were able to 3D print a new top section of her skull for her, and it worked. Wow! I mean, that's crazy. That's, that's I mean, no, so it's not a heart. Um, it, you know, we're not there, but man, that is nuts. Yeah, I. Uh, so, that... sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, so you mean that, that that's it, right? I mean, it, we're already moving that direction. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, crossing my fingers. I hope I make it. I hope I make it. 2087. We can do this. Uh, it's because I, you know, I, I wonder like uh, this century is so hard to tell. I mean, I mean, we're like, we're walking into the future. Really? Uh, if you think about 2014, 2015, I remember watching movies in the nineties about what 2014 and, you know, 2015, 2020 is going to look like. Right. And, and uh, holy shit, where are the flying cars? Uh, I know it's just so anticlimactic. Yeah, like, this is bullshit. They said there was going to be. Where, I mean, where's my hoverboard from Back to the Future? I mean, this is really? bullshit. Are, are Come you... on, Mattel, <laughs> get your act together, and make some goddamn hoverboards. What are you doing with? Yeah, no, I. I it's still Mattel and the toy industry. They're made. They're they're a billion dollar industry still, right? It, it, I feel like they still make fuck tons of money on plastic toys. Well, there's a lot of crazy industries. I mean, I mean, like the pet industry is crazy to me. I mean, this is taking a hilarious turn, but the pet industry, the amount of money, and I and I support it. My dog goes to daycare. I admit it. My dog goes to daycare. Beautiful dog, by the um, way. So yeah. What's that? Uh, you have a beautiful dog, by the way. Well, thank. Well, I have I have I have two. Uh, one one's sort of half mine. Oh. Um, which is a little Chihuahua, and then the other one, the big lab, is is uh, is sort of my 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 full time dog. But uh, yeah, he he goes to daycare. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy world we live in. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not. Yeah, I don't judge you at all because I, me and my, my my girlfriend and I, we have a we have a dog, and we would take her to daycare if we if we had to. Um, yeah, you know, we we pay for her spa, not spa, but like her haircut. Like where she, yeah. yeah, like that's that's. You know, that's a service. That's like a, there. Yeah, it's crazy. You're right. The, eats, better, eats better than I do, man. Oh, it's a multi. I don't even know how many millions, billions, but it, these are huge industries, and they didn't exist 50 years ago. Yeah, 20 you, or 10 years ago. I mean, you know, at this level. So speaking of industry, I think that VR, uh, being the the the, the young born industry that it is, I think there's. You know, and something I've been saying a lot, you know, we should figure out a way to start buying out uh, puppets, I mean politicians, because, you know, we need law, I, I think we need lobbyists to get out there and, and, and start uh, lobbying for this, for this industry, because I don't, I, I don't know if there's going to be backlash from the TV industry or the, um, I don't know, uh, who, 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 what industry do you think will be affected directly um, by virtual reality? Well, Jeez, I mean, I don't know if it's VR. That's, that, I mean, maybe not at this stage, anyways. I I see, um, you know, the internet, you know, putting that pressure already on cable and 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 sort of, you know, the the, the typical way that we access our media. Yeah. Because um, you know, most of us are downloading. Most of us are are uh, you know Netflix and all these different different things that are away from you know our, our typical setup. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if VR is going to force anybody out. I mean, it, you know, I think that once 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 we have a consumer product, we'll start seeing what the influence is. Mm -hmm. At this stage, I think it's too early to know uh, what other industries it's going to affect. But uh, you know, I, I don't I don't see it hurting anybody yet. Yeah, 
I, I, I'm going to throw I mean, my two cents into the console. Because yeah. console guys, I mean, you know, PlayStation and I think Xbox. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to have, uh, you know, Steambox. I mean, pe- there, there's going to be consoles that will have VR experiences. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to be the con. I mean, however, and it's funny for me to say because I used to fight Kane on this and he used to tell me how terrible my PS3 was and how outdated and I didn't appreciate it and said that, oh, my games look awesome on my ice cream and I don't care. But – you know, now thinking about it, I mean, I don't understand how Morpheus can be relevant when, you know, in probably five, six, seven years, we're still going to be using that same tech. I mean, there's just no way. Hmm. Yeah. It's just, I, I, I just, uh, how, how can it? I mean, you can't upgrade a video card. You can't, like, how, how could that piece of machinery that is sort of frozen in time yes. be relevant from a demand? I mean, VR is demanding. You can't, you know, take, you know, your grandmother's uh, PC and try to, 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 you know, run different experiences. You just can't. It sucks. You need a powerful PC. And so uh, I, I don't know how, how Morpheus and how PlayStation or Xbox or these console, I mean, Steambox is different, but I don't know how they're, they're, they plan to, you know, fix that. That is a super, uh, that was, that's a really good point. I, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I, I think about it and, I'm, and it, it just makes total sense, it, especially knowing that when Sony designs a console, they're thinking about 10 years and ahead of time, seven, eight, nine years, you know, ahead of time. And, and there wasn't they, the PS three, seven, right? I think PS three, seven years. Yeah. And, and so, and so, and I don't know, I, I really wish I knew more uh, what, the fuck is happening inside the halls of sony because i wish uh, you know i knew how much time they think morpheus is gonna last because here's the thing and the and thank you for helping me realize this this could hurt the virtual reality industry in terms of games because if three years down the line sony's still stuck on the same hardware and oculus is smoking them I wonder if that hardware fragmentation, you know, between one hardware that can put up, put put the leg work and, you know, and, and has the horsepower versus another one that is PS4. I wonder if that will, that divide will, will, will hurt the industry in terms of making, a, you know, consistent content available for everyone. Um, I, I, but I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a really good point you bring up. I don't know if, how, how far ahead of time Sony's thinking about this and, Hmm. Well, it's 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 kind of. I mean, it's it's one of those things where uh, who who knows what 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 they'll do. I don't think that we're going to be relying on um, PlayStation to do our VR content. I mean, obviously there'll be probably some some titles that somebody figures out a way to to make work for the Rift. But I think for the most part, I. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, there, there's a lot about the gaming industry I don't appreciate, which is you know, probably true. Uh, well, definitely true. Um, but but I think that you know there'll be a separate issue, and I think that the people that who buy it and you know check it out will get bored of it if it if it can't keep up, um, you know, year to year, and people get bored of it and put it down and just go back to their old console um, experience and 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 stop seeking VR because there's a lot of people who will never get a PC. It's just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. They want their Mac, uh, maybe, and they definitely like their console, and they have no plans in the future to ever, and they don't want to spend 1200 bucks or two grand or whatever and constantly upgrade. They have no interest in dealing with a PC, and, and I was one of them. So, you know, th- there's folks out there who will not convert, and it's not going to happen, mm-hmm. and so if they have a poor experience um, on console VR, whatever that's going to be, Morpheus or whatever, um, I, I think you're going to see a segment of the population lose interest in VR. Um, you know, will, will that hurt the rest of us? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, there, there's there's millions and millions and millions of people that uh, that, that are into consoles. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the more people that we have, um, you know, supporting VR content, you know, the better. I mean, you know, they sell millions of, of Morpheus units. Um, you know, you're going to see big name developers coming out and putting real money into this stuff. And so, and the same is true for Oculus. So I think, you know, we, we want it to happen, but, um, it, that's a huge limitation. I mean, you know, that, that, uh, that hardware frozen in time. I mean, what, I, I don't know how you overcome that. Do you think that Oculus can become a victim of its own success? And by that, I mean, you know, uh, how, you know, how, 
let's imagine that it, it'll get to a point where, holy shit, the Rift is selling millions in the millions. And, and yes, these developers, the big time publishers are paying attention. Do you think that their entry into the game, into the playing field of virtual reality will hurt indie developers that have been at it for this, you know, for this long time? What are your thoughts on that? Are you talking about you know the moment when when like sort of the, these big developers come in? Yeah, the moment when EA and and, and Ubisoft re- realize, holy shit, there's money to be made. Let's start you know turning the ship around, and and now developers have to. I mean, do you think developers have, have something to worry about here, or is it you know, or is the ocean deep enough and big enough for everyone here? Uh, you know what I love? I really love to say, develop. You know, indie developers. You have nothing to worry about. The truth is, indie developers have a ton of work to be worried about. I, I think that anytime you have, you know, if you're in a world where, you know, nobody, nobody's really paying attention to you. That 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 you know, any, sort of, you know, these, you know, EA and Dice and these big big groups. I mean, they they weren't they weren't interested in in this subject matter because there's not enough eyeballs on it and it doesn't make fiscal sense to them. But the moment that it does, um, I think, you know, the developers, you know, as right now, everybody's living in this closed universe where we're sort of just, you know, showing each other content and sort of doing stuff, um, you know, for each other, you know, as far as the product, I mean, it's a small community and there's only a small group of people making the content and, and a small group of people consuming it. But I think that you know once this becomes mainstream enough, where developers, um, you know, AAA developers, for them it makes sense, um, you know, financial sense to enter into the market. I mean, the truth is, is that you know I don't care how good of a developer you are, um, if you're one guy in a basement, you could get absolutely destroyed by a team of you know. I mean, you see these titles. There's thousands of, 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 of people on, you know, working on these things. There's millions and millions of dollars I- invested. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and when you're working, you know, uh, you know, a day job and, and tinkering in your evenings, there's no way you're going to keep up. I mean, I, I think that a lot of these developers' projects could get taken over and wiped out within a week. Mm. You know, and the things that these developers are stuck on um, would be fixed in, in no time. You, yeah. know, you throw a million bucks and a bunch of heads at it, you're going to get the, these these issues solved. So, yeah, I think they absolutely have something to be worried about. But I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that that's not the way that it goes. And I hope that, you know, we all remember and we all still have an appetite for, you know, something that's not perfect. Thankfully, these these big publishers, once they realize that there's a lot of money to be made, the the first place they'll start looking for talent in this specific uh, space, you know, would be among the indie developers going out and, and trying to hire them. I, I mean, I, that's, I, I don't know if you can just, you know, Rockstar can turn their 500 group of, you know, their 500 team of engineers and tell them, hey, everybody, we're all doing virtual reality now, you know, read the Oculus best practices, you're all VR developers. I wonder if it's that easy because, you know, I, I figured the best case There's scenario... Uh, right. I'm sure, there's. A, I mean, I, I guess you know what. Th- this is how I look at it. Um, you know, Kane is a very smart kid, um, but he's a guy who doesn't come from a developing background, and he was able to, in a very short period of time, tinkering with uh, with with Unity to actually um, have something that was playable and fun and cool. That's amazing. So I think that if he can do that. There's people who have been doing this for 20 years of just, you know, coding all day and night. I mean, they they can do it in their sleep. Mm. I, I don't think that the learning curve is that steep. I mean, what do I know? I mean, you got to ask some of these these you know really talented developers. Uh, but um, you know, I think there's guys out there with you know a team behind them that can do anything. And wipe these these indie developers, you know their their project that they've been working, you know, tinkering with. I mean, in in a short period of time, that's the real fear. Yeah, just on the level. I mean, and not to stay too too hung up on this particular subject, but just on the level of in, in, in competition, in, in example, like you know, I don't know if I. It, it would be really hard to uh, get me. F- from you know, if I were the average person at GameStop or whatever, and I see pick up two games, one is, 
you know, so and so from Indie VR developer, and the other one is Grand Theft Auto V VR enabled, you know, and all the bugs worked out. I want, dude, I want to explore the Grand Theft Auto universe uh, happily in, inside of virtual reality, and to think that the and Rockstar wouldn't have the money to start telling its development team, all right, you have three months, four months, make this shit work. I, I you know, it's just it's yeah it's definitely i agree with you there's definitely something to be worried about it's just i don't know it's just a matter of time before they catch on to what's happening around them well i mean and listen this is an early i mean this is an early de- you know demo but you know and and I, and I and you know he got hired on by oculus but you know the rift coaster rift coaster is really really cool mm-hmm. but i mean you can't compare that experience to like what you're talking about uh getting inside uh you know gta yeah. so um you know, there's only so long and so far that we will, um, you know, be, be, you know, excited by these very simplistic experiences. You know, we all want, um, everything. We want it now and it better be awesome and it better have no latency and it's got to be perfect and don't piss me off. And that's our attitude. So, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, I, I think we'll appreciate very little, um, that will be achieved. And, uh, and yeah, but I think we all, we absolutely want a perfect polished, uh, experience. I mean, you hear it every day. Mm-hmm. You hear people criticizing, you know, these different things, and it's it's just it's it's hilarious. I mean, um, but that's how it is. We're we're a bunch of brats. We, <laughs> I agree. We are. <laughs> well, I, I am. I know for sure. I think that, I, and, and this and this brings me back almost full circle to that 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 idea of having uh, of what Oculus is doing in terms of. Uh, acquiring indie developers are do, are they doing fast enough are they planning i mean are they you know what is their plan what is their strategy it's anyone's guess but i i, I you know i wonder um software being such an important aspect of virtual reality i wonder how much you know how much money and effort they're they're gonna put into making sure that they have a, a software ecosystem once launch time comes around well, i think i think that they've really they've really failed um their developers thus far um, but you know how they remedy that. I mean, we have to remember that these are this is a very new group, a new yeah. company, a new everything, yeah. um, and they're not going to get it right in every single way, and they're not going to please everybody, and yeah. it's not going to. I mean, it's just it's just how it is. Um, so you know what they've been able to accomplish is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. So you know that being said, um, you know they need to do better by. The developers, and I don't mean just you know hiring on like they've done, and they've hired on some some great developers. But it's interesting if you look at some of these developers they've hired. It's not necessarily for them to develop games. It might be for web content or or, or different things. That's actually their experience. So I you know while their 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 demo may have got their resume noticed, it was the resume that got them the job. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think you know so so I don't think it's a, you know I, my expectation is not that Oculus you know, hires on everybody who makes a, a cool demo. But what I do expect is that, um, you know, they reach out and, and try to partner with some of these guys and say, you know what, you made a really cool demo. We want to include it with CV1. We mm. want to give these experiences and whatever they are. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it'd be cool. I mean, they, 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 they sure talked a big game about taking that position, um, but it'll be interesting to see if they do. I mean, up till, you know, this point, they've kind of left the indie developers in the dark. CV1, I you know, should definitely be bundled with something. I don't think we should leave it up to the consumer to figure out, especially you know, like you said, this being so new. I, I don't know if we should leave it up to the consumer to decide what is the best experience for them. I, I think it we you know uh, it would be wise for Oculus to take the Wii approach that Nintendo took. They released the Wii and they had Wii Sports bundled with it, and people had you know an, an, an excellent example of how the hardware worked. Um, in harmony with the software, so so I think oh, that I, yeah, I totally would, agree with you. Yeah, it'd be really smart you for them. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're no. I was just agree with you. You got it. You got it. That's exactly the approach. You have to bundle it. I mean, you know, whether what you know, if I if I had my my druthers, you know, I I know which you know things that I would want bundled. But you know, I think I think you want these experiences. I mean, I think. You know, a Rift Max experience should be bundled. I think people should get to when they get CV1, go watch a movie and have an experience chatting with their friend. Um, you know, 
but but uh, you know that that that's just me. I mean, I think you know the Rift Coaster and, and things like that should be bundled because that's a really cool experience. I think Time Rifters is a really cool experience that, that that shows that. I think you know I think that there's a lot of these really classy, well done demos that really show, like you said, um, what what this technology is, um, and and then from there let people decide what they want. Definitely. That's, but, yeah. But yeah, I do. But you know, in going back to your point, and in, in assuming, of course, that again, this is an assumption that uh, CV1 is getting released this winter. Um, do you think it uh, would it be would it be wise for Oculus to push it back a little bit in order to make sure that they release with a full ecosystem? Or, or I mean, because at this point, it just feels kind of hard to. It's already what April. Uh, so what? Ten more months? Yeah. Yeah. That. Eight, yeah. Eight, eight. Eight more months to the to the winter to you know to December for example. I think that that's a pretty short amount of time if you if you started hiring, you know, developers, indie developers. Uh, well, mm. I mean, you know, the, it, I think that that would be true if if where they were at mm -hmm. was DK two, but they're so much far further beyond. Where DK2 is, you know, yeah. is going to be yeah. presently. That I, 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 think that they've set, you know, they know what, what, what the, you know, that they can meet, you know, sort of their, their, their goals and, 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 you know, our, uh, you know, insane expectations. And, and, I, but, uh, you know, I think it would be uh, a, a huge mistake to release to release it early and not be in a place where, where people were going to adopt. I mean, CV1 has to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It has to be because you know DK one as it is right now is very very cool, um, but you know it's more of a you know uh, sort of like a, a you know a science project. I mean, it's cool to show people, and it's but it's just not polished enough where your average you know gamer will want to have that on for you know excessive amounts of time, and and you know it's just it is what it is. Yeah, once the DK2 arrives, uh, CV1 will be uh, a collector's item that I will put in my closet and uh, give it to my grandchildren when they uh, and they're gonna laugh at me, Grandpa. What the fuck is this? I'll be like, don't speak to your grandpa that way, because DK1. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I think it's it's going to be um, a, a collector's item, and and um, I mean. Just the same way that we think of, you know, you know, eight bit uh, Nintendo. I mean, it's, you know, these things are are collectors' items, and there was it wasn't that long ago that I remember being in Toys R Us and and absolutely needing that thing, and I wanted the robot, and I had to have Rob the robot, and I just I remember that experience, and I remember not thinking at that point that this could get any better, yeah. um, and we're such a far away from. Uh, from you know Mario, I mean it's just it's just amazing. Speaking of Nintendo, uh, you know Nintendo is one of those companies that I admire a, a, a lot, but but they also frustrate me uh, because I want them to succeed, and yet and, and yet I you know they I don't know there's something something happening to Nintendo that I can't really put my finger on. Where do you think Nintendo's going to fall into this? Do you think Nintendo's going to react to virtual reality by doing their own thing uh, or are they going to continue the path that they've been walking uh, what do you think yeah i mean well i think i mean they they took a stab at uh, at vr back in the day I yeah mean, um so it was in a virtual boy yeah. um i mean you know so i don't know who knows who knows what what uh, what the future will bring um from nintendo but i think that they have enough uh money behind them um, I think I read that they have just a boatload of money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I, I think that they will somehow stay relevant and, and whether that is giving people a sort of, you know, we like experience or, or something else. I mean, I think Nintendo is going to be relevant, but I'm with you, man. Like, you know, I, as a kid, every, was everything Nintendo and, and today you can't game the way that you want to game with anything that's Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird. I mean, you thing. just can't. Yeah, I you know I played Skyward Sword. The last Nintendo game that I played was Zelda Skyward Sword, and I remember rage quitting so much because the stupid controller uh, it would just get decalibrated all the time. I, I don't know. It, uh, 
it's it's hard, man, because I, f- I feel entitled when I when I say that. <laughs> I feel like an entitled gamer. Why doesn't that work? But you know, but coming from Nintendo, like Nintendo was one of those companies who growing up where, you know, they would bleed you. They would make you hurt from the amount of waiting they would make you. They would put you through because they, when they released the game, they made sure. There weren't any bugs in it. They weren't. They, you know, they they made sure that there because there wasn't. You know, I think Nintendo was, was still in an era. You know, the Nintendo 64, Nintendo GameCube era, for example, where they released stuff and they they only had one chance. No patching, none of that updates and stuff. It's and so for that matter, I really admired them um, because they released stuff. Yeah, to- yeah. To- but just you know, totally different world. Yeah, in mean, such a different world. And I mean, but talk about patience. I remember. That I remember Nintendo, the very first Nintendo, the amount of hours of you know blowing air on the cartridge, just yeah. making, just praying that it would work. Halfway through the game, it would start flashing, and you just you wanted to just put your fist through the television. Um, oh, good old Nintendo! Yeah, those were some good times. <laughs> Yeah, you, you just you, you cannot put you know anything you know there, there's there's nothing you know for the sort of things that, that you and I are into you, you can't you know have a Call of Duty a Battlefield you can't have that experience on Nintendo you have these you know kind of lame characters and you go bowling I mean it's it's just a different world it's a different world but having said that when we came out I thought it was the coolest thing and I had it and I had friends come over to play tennis and and bowl. So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, the, the cool thing of the day. I remember when I had a Wii, I, uh, when I got my Wii, uh, I remember my friends used to make fun of me. They'd be like, Chris, when are you going to get a grown man's console? Meaning the PS3 or the Xbox 360. But I, I, I mean, but see, here's the thing about the Wii. Uh, the Wii, uh, I had, I bought extra guitars for Guitar Hero and I bought extra controllers and I would have hella friends come over to my house and come play, um, which was awesome. I, I think that some of the things that the consoles, the hardcore consoles did, I mean, if that's like your cup of joe, your cup of tea, that's fine. But a lot of console gamers just sort of play by themselves. And that's cool. But, you know, with the Wii, like, yeah, it was awesome. I, you know, I would have parties and people would come play Wii at my house. It was, yeah, such a weird thing. Oh, such yeah. a weird era. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking here. I have like a a fake Fender, a fake Gibson, and yeah, I'm I'm totally with you. I mean, um, actually, I remember I was living in New York at the time, and I got a uh, I picked up the Wii, and I was visiting my buddy in L.A., and I actually packed the Wii and two guitars in my bag, so when I landed there, we could just nerd out for the entire weekend and play this new cutting edge technology yeah um and had and had such a blast like uh, such such a good time so um yeah i'm with you i mean what we just so yeah like to have that so and i think vr is going to give us that social experience but actually with compelling gaming yeah i i wonder though yeah man i, I am i i'm in total agreement mr flake what do you have coming up in the future? What are you working on? I, I think we're about to reach the end of the show. Um, you know, I, again, I could go on talking with you for hours, man. You're you're an awesome person to talk to. So. Oh, you too, man. I appreciate that. Um, geez, the future. You know, I I, I I'm kind of uh, I'm like a crow. I see you know shiny objects and I and I lose focus. So you know, lately, um, the the focus. You know, I was trying to get into a lot of these demos and, and, and then started uh, getting into um, Riff Max and excited about the possibilities that that has. So I've kind of been all over the place, but um, I really want to just kind of focus on what I love, like enjoy doing the most. And that's, you know, trying out new demos. And, uh, and, and so I really want to be putting out a lot more content than, than I presently am on the channel. But, um, you know, to me, it's just crazy. You know, we've hit uh, over 500 subscribers and for a lot of people that that's probably laughable. But for me, I mean, you know, that to me, that represents 500, you know, at, like real subscribers. And, and, uh, you know, I, I just think it's so crazy to me that, you know, there's 500 people that, that, you know, even care. So, you know, to me, it's just, it's all mind boggling and, and exciting. And I just want to be, um, you know, focusing on that and, and doing, uh, you know, more, more of the let's play stuff. And, and, uh, you know, as this uh, becomes more of a mainstream thing, I think people will be looking for, um, you know, more honest, 
um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, straightforward gameplay content um, and wanting it to, you know, explore the possibilities of the Rift. And I hope I can be relevant in, in that way. And um, But if, if my future is just, uh, you know, playing awesome content, then I'm happy to. So, you know, whatever it is, I'm just stoked uh, that, that VR is here and I, and I, and I, I believe it's here to stay. So, um, you know, just, just excited to be a uh, part of the community and to be on Reddit and, and, uh, and just, it's just been awesome. It's been really, really cool and really flattering and, uh, and, uh, been having a lot of fun with it. And so, you know, my future is, uh, just going to keep doing what, what, uh, what, what I'm having fun doing. And that's, uh, you know, playing these games and talking to good, good folks like you. Thank you. That is that is an awesome perspective. I I, I like your style. I, I like your moves. I enjoy your your show and your your YouTube channel. You make me laugh. So so thank you. Keep doing it, man. Because I'm a I'm a fan of yours. Uh, how can people stay in touch with you? Do you have a Twitter handle? Do you have a, a Facebook page? Any of that good stuff? We do. We uh, um, basically, uh, you know, check out our YouTube channel. That's always the the, the best. Um, and there's links to Twitter and links to everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's all so new for us. And and uh, you know, so it's happening, um, you know, at, at a reasonable pace for us. And and um, but yeah, it's just it's just crazy. It's really really crazy. So you know, please, you know, if you if you want to check out some some content, check out our uh, our, our YouTube channel. Um, uh, the, uh, the the VR guinea pig and uh, um, you know stay tuned. Uh, we'll, we'll hopefully you know I, I to be honest I'd really like to to get to the point where I can get to some conferences and uh, you know produce some 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 content some good interviews. Um, so we'll see what happens. I just kind of want to get into all things VR and have fun and provide uh, you know everybody with with some honest you know really cool content. So um, you know stay tuned. You know subscribe if you haven't and just stay tuned. We'll. We're, 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 we're hoping uh, for, for cool things in the future. Fucking awesome, man. I love it. Uh, again, Flake, the VR guinea pig, uh, one of the uh, Rift, Mac Theater, Rift Mac Theater's organizers, would you say you are? Or, or sort of... Uh, well, you know, just a, a friend and, and enthusiast and, and, and supporter. Perfect. That's what I'd say. Awesome. Um, thanks so much for your time. It was, it was really a pleasure. I can't wait to have you back on the show, and perhaps we can geek out and I can... Uh, take you to places that uh awkward places <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I look forward to you taking me to awkward places chris <laughs>